Hello and welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I am Nerdarchist Ted, and tonight we're going to play some 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, I've got these lovely players here, and before we have a chance to kind of dive in and you know, let them know, you know, or let you know who they are and who they're playing and all of that stuff. I got two quick messages. One, down in the description below, you're going to find a link to our sponsor for this game, Easy Roller Dice. Uh, they're our favorite set of dice, or they're, they're our favorite dice company. Uh, down, there, down in the description, you're going to find a link to uh, their, their website and a promo code to get 20% off your first order. They're awesome. I love them. I, I use them all the time, whether you want the plastic dice or the metal dice, they, they got you covered. Second link you're going to find down in that description is going to be the link for our current Kickstarter for Mage Forge. It's 250 tower sized magic item cards set for your D&D game. I'm doing the art directing for it. I'm having a blast with it. Started today to in, you know begin bringing in our third and fourth artist, which is super awesome. You have to check out the Kickstarter. We're already funded and what have you. So go check it out. Have fun with that and add some new magic items to your D&D game. Without further ado, I'm going to toss it to our players. Uh, it's been a little bit of time since we've played. We took December off for a number of reasons. Uh, so I'm going to toss it over to our producer, Jake. Oh, that's me. Hey. Hey, Internet, it's Jake from Mini Terrain Domain, and that's where you can find me when I'm not here on Nerdarchy Live. Specifically, you can find me running the Scribes and Scrolls, the Candlekeep Mysteries campaign on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. And you can find myself along with Ted and some other great friends of ours on Thursday nights. We just had our season six premiere last night over on twitch.tv slash mini terrain domain with our new season uh wild beyond the witch light um and then we have uh some new shows starting and and returning with some infrequent uh call of cthulhu once a month um some star wars coming uh we've got neofet running a dungeons and dragons salt marsh game every other tuesday lots of great stuff happening over there um, and I am playing the Dwarven Beardomancer Odo Wonderbeard, who's probably wondering where my beard is. All right, so who are you tossing it to? I will toss it to. Oh, goodness. Hi. I'm Robin. I've got books. Go click, buy books, read weird fiction. Um, I can also be found here on Tuesday nights uh, with Ted and company, and we're doing a superhero campaign. And on Thursdays, I'm over on Quill and Sword, and I will be playing Chesseline, the Drawblade singer who recently uh, took up necromancy and is very excited about it. And I will toss it to Asa. Well, hello. I, I am Asa, and uh, Ted, your talk of tarot-sized cards made me think that I have card-sized tarots. But <laughs> as, I, as I went to pull this deck out, I realized somebody went ahead and spilled coffee on it. So I'm very upset with oh. that person. They are, they are currently grounded. Um, grounded? Person. Yes, I grounded coffee. myself. Coffee? Ah, <laughs> not intended. That was good, though. I wish I had thought of it. Um, I'm Asa. I am with Roll for Mischief. We are launching our second season this Tuesday uh, at 12 p.m. Pacific time on Twitch. That's at Roll for Mischief. Dot Twitch, whatever the Twitch thing is. <laughs> I don't link, know how that works. Twitch.tv slash Roll for Mischief. Link in the thing, like Ted just said. Um, <laughs> I am rhyming, and that was not on purpose either. So uh, I'm playing Joshua, the Tiefling Onomancer. And uh, yeah, he's just a you scared forgot your, the poo. You forgot you're playing Joshua. Yeah, it's true, Joshua. As you notice, like my name in the credits is just a singular name. Who knows if it's actually my name? Joshua's in the same boat. That's just the but name he gives. We're pretty um, confident that that being an onomancer, you give out the name Joshua. That's not true. Yeah, exactly. But you know, what you choose to believe is up to you. And last but certainly not least, uh, I am Freganator. I don't 
produce or DM anything anywhere. I don't write, write weird fiction and I don't have another game I play in. So <laughs> I'm <laughs> going to be playing a Loxodon Order of Scribes slash Divination Wizard, uh, Avtok Treebender. And I will pass it back to Ted. Uh, and as, as, as we notice that you are currently not wearing your ears or trunk. No, I lost him in the move. Oh, oh no, that's what happens when you like, I did see I did see the ears like three or four days ago. I haven't seen the trunk in like four months. All right. Well, that's okay. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive in. As previously mentioned by by Robin Chesseline, that uh, the 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 necromancy, the what was it called again? I am jumping. The Gravain Graveyard. There you go. The Gravain Graveyard. Uh, look at that. My players have better notes than I do. Uh, you know, was recently corrected as the, uh, you know, the Obsidian Skull was uh, restored to its powers. But on their trip home, uh, there was some shenanigans that wound up transpiring and you did not make it directly home as you took a jaunt last session into the beard dimension further diving into nerdarchy's material plane that has been running rampant through our patreon rewards over the last three different aprils uh so i thought it was time to actually get there and see what was actually there and our lovely players got to actually add a little bit of fun and mischief into such a place um, but we ended last session with you returning via the beard dragon back hurtling through the plane and despite having spent several days in the beard dimension you seem to have found the time loop and have caught back up mid transport to uh, your your missing companion and descend yet again Back into the Council of Eight, the Council of Eight Chambers, the the citadel known as Gold Taloth. You appear yet again within the summoning circle or the the teleportation sigil that is carved upon the ground, and uh, it is before too long that yet again one of the attendees comes to see if there's anything that you need and to get an update as to what has transpired. Oh, I am going to need so much parchment. I have so many notes that I need to take on the thing that just happened. Well, of course, the uh, the library has all the parchment that you could require. Um, like a challenge. Uh, you are able to do as you will. As you land, uh, you notice that Speranza, while having teleported with the rest of you, she is not getting up. Hey, I'm proficient in medicine. Can I check her? Sure. <laughs> oh, crap. Why did I just... <sighs> you volunteered to roll dice. <laughs> I realized that after I asked. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> oh, did you do your... um? Divination rolls? Yes. He, he yeah. Gave them. Okay. <laughs> now you're hoping to get into combat because, you know, you rolled like <laughs> Fragonator. <laughs> uh, so uh, she she is breathing. You can definitely ascertain that. Um, but she is clearly not well. Um, I'm going to I'm going to send the attendant that came to us to go and fetch her mentor. Sure. Uh, so before too long, I don't know how many of you decide to chill out with, Esper uh, with Speranza or whether you head off in your own direction. But her mentor does come collect her. Uh, they apparently have some kind of cleric or medic, medico, uh, you know, here within the Citadel. And she is escorted off to some other chamber. Chess would wait with her until that happens and only then would leave the room. Sure. What's everybody else doing? I, I would have waited as well. 
Yeah. I'm trying to decide if Joshua and Speranza had enough of a relationship for him to like feel like he could accompany her to the medic and just kind of wait with her. Okay. I don't know if they did though. Well, Speranza kind of acted like the, the mom of the group. Yeah, that's true. But it is entirely up to you as to how you treat and roll. Excuse yeah. me, that particular situation. Avtok is the, the party worrier. Uh, I think he would he would have uh, probably swooned a bit when she wasn't coming to and then, and then gone with her to the when they went to the clerics and just waited by her side. Uh, you know, after probably spending too much time in the way of the clerics and probably eventually being told not too kindly to wait over there, uh, he, he would have sat down and pulled out a book and, and you know, tried to calm his nerves by reading. Sure. Uh, so Did Joshua take my name? <laughs> he said Avtok is the worrier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what he does. He introduced himself to the, the clerics as Avtok Treebender, so, uh, you know. It's, well, it's if me, anyone is... Avtok Treebender, and he's got, like, a, a paper towel uh, roll stuck oh, to no. its nose. Well, if anyone is going to take your name, it's going to be the Una Manson. I, I was just curious. Like, I I'm not think... there, but... I wasn't I, sure if it was a Freudian slip or if you did it on purpose. <laughs> oh, absolutely not on purpose. Nothing I've done tonight has been on purpose. So uh, you you find out, you know, within short order, within 10 minutes, that she is fine or will be fine. It was apparently, she seemed to get lost in the teleport. And that could be the reason why the... Um, why you were able to catch up. So while you were traversing the beard dimension, she was kind of lost throughout the, the, the realms, the planes of existence, if you will. She's, she's caught something from that. We're pretty sure that it's going to be okay. Uh, it's just going to take some time and they urge you to step. Okay. Oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. Uh, Joshua will ask, uh, what, you did find her medical records, right? Like, what name did she put on there? Uh, can I can just, I like, grab him by the ear and, like, haul him out of the room? <laughs> just, I want to make sure that everything is in order. Make sure that she decided to... Fine. Oh, fine, sure. Fine, Chelsea. Absolutely. Exactly what you're doing. You, yep. you understand that a name read is not the same as a name given. It's not as useful to you. You know who you are. It's still a name. <laughs> I mean, I would never try to use. No, that would be wrong. Listen, we gotta, we gotta go war table. Figure out what our next steps are gonna be. You don't need to be doing what you're doing right now. You're, of course, you're right. You're always right. Smart men. I think Josh was decided he's kind of afraid of chess. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Probably Ordo. <laughs> so as you step out of you know this particular chamber, the the satyr, the conjurer master, Zan, Zam, Zan, X A A M. Oh, Nixog. I see. Okay. Uh, I had it written as the X A A N. Um, oh, um, so uh, yeah. and Asa, you have your notes from me, so you're gonna need to fix that too. <laughs> okay. It's... All right. Wait, there was a note sharing app. <laughs> uh, if you want the notes, I'll send them to you as well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, Zam Zam looks in at you know the the lot of you, uh, looking more. At the uh, your colleague who seems worse for wear, but you know quickly turns to the lot of you and is, um, seems some thing transpired. What is what is the report? You wish to do it to the lot of us, or shall we get straight away to it? It might be best to gather everyone together. 
So he looks to one of the attendants and begins heading off in a direction or three. And before too long, the uh, a lot of you are, are called into meeting hall and the, uh, the eight masters wind up taking their seats. Chess Not- is like just a little bit more puffed up than usual. She's kind of proud of herself right now, and it's not hard to see it. How long would it have taken to gather uh, this together? Uh, while the attendant went off, it seemed while he was moving, there was some spell casting that was done. So it actually takes less than 10 minutes. Okay. First to arrive in his black on black robes, his, his Raelith then cast the half elven necromancer. And while he might be the first in, into the room of the masters, he uh, is more pacing, waiting for everyone else, looking rather expectantly at not just a lot of you, but at Chesseline. Are you? trying to keep your composure or do you give off anything oh she's just standing up straight and like smirking a little bit actually all right are you attempting to hide uh, the success of the mission no not at all as a matter of fact she expects him to know already Uh, so with a with a look you know and in your direction as the, the lot of you enter, he just gives a nod and sits down. The last of the eight arrive. It is uh, Onith, the half orc uh, evocator. You now his large, large form in red robes sits down. I guess we can begin. And he kind of gestures to a lot of you. So I can think of two major issues that we're going to have to discuss. Um, That being the angel that we had to fight and the detour that we took on the way here. Does anybody else have anything else to add to the agenda? Nope. Uh, Avtok looks kind of sullen and like he really just wants to go to his room <laughs> and get away. Is something wrong? We can discuss it later. Okay. Um, all right. So this feels like it was almost a lifetime ago, but when we were in the Gravain graveyard, there was an angel there that was stopping us from getting to the um the skull at the center of it and there was a lot of talk of stealing magic and like not is supposed to be using it the way that we do but we did beat this entity like we defeated it it's just that i strongly suspect this has something to do with everything else breaking as well so the the enchanter uh, wearing a you know, yellow sash and silver flowers on a pale blue dress, uh, Etia Moonflower, the Wood Elven uh, Enchanter, like, let you finish speaking. Are you saying that a celestial wish to stop magic? Yes. It doesn't make any sense. Maybe it doesn't, but that is what happened. How much detail do you do you go into? Oh, I will give them the whole sordid story in graphic detail. And you can tell she's bragging a little bit because I remember that fight and doing like a buku ton of damage in it. So like Chess is just real puffed up at the moment. She's very so, happy about how this turned out. So there winds up being this large discussion and the The masters are speaking rather openly. You know, there's a little bit of back and forth about 
you know, the difference between divine magic and arcane magic, and you know that there are some who who wind up blending, some who don't see a, a difference. You know, as far as the lot of you are concerned, do you weigh in on the debate? Do you pick a side? Do you not care? Go ahead, Asa. I'm just trying to think about what I think. All you right, well, while you're that. thinking, uh, Avtok just looks like he's staring off into space and thinking deep in thought. Sure. Avt- Avtok remains silent, but, but thoughtful. Well, he, you can hear him like slightly muttering under his breath, but it's complete gibberish from what it sounds like. Well, I don't think that they have any reason to stop us from doing what we're doing. If anything, they're just getting full of themselves. And I don't think that there's a single person here that wants these angels to succeed in what they want here. We would be completely powerless if they did. Like, well, the point is we have to stop them. I agree. As my understanding of angels is, is functioning, um, they are sort of duty bound to their gods. Am I am I correct? Does that not mean that we might be looking at higher divine sources that are getting involved here? The celestials, like the fiends, are pure concentration of what they were designed for. Just because one is a a celestial does not necessarily make them all know. What did you say? Who is speaking? Yeah. Um, uh, So this would be uh, Aruzi, the Gnomish transmitter. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sure. No, no, no. It's, It's it makes a whole lot of sense Um, the you know the the celestial just because it is created a celestial does not necessarily mean it has all the answers celestials have a chain of command and if superior is corrupted in some way shape or form and the those below it are unaware it could act against its nature or if something in one of a number of celestials were to be skewed by logic or through magical means it might act in a way that seems to fall within its parameters of what it's bound to do while going against it's seemingly good in nature. Seems to me like we could use more information. Tess lifts her chin and says, we will stop them. And if they are getting their orders from something higher than they are, then we'll stop them too. You are all wizards. Gaining more information is almost point number one on what we do. Question is, what are you going to do to get that information? Well, the divination is back on. So, uh, Garavald, the diviner, he's been kind of sitting quiet listening to, to everyone you know, sitting next to uh, Raylith, you know, the, the, the stark contrast, his white on white versus Raylith's black on black. Um, but he is significantly smaller, much less fabric in Garavald's uh, halfling clothing. But he, he just, you know, kind of listens and nods. Yes, the divination magic is back on and I might be able to do a number of things but you have to understand that as much as I am able to do if I pry too hard in the wrong direction 
it might make further enemies and muddle the waters even more. Was any names given, any information, sigils, anything that you saw or heard might steer me in the right direction? I'm certain that, that when you defeated this enemy, they did not remain. It was a, if it was a true celestial, they would have just entirely vanished, gear and all. Uh, Ted, this was literally three months ago. Would you care to give me a hand here? <laughs> I, don't, I know. I'm like. I know that that uh, Joshua asked the name, but it it. I don't think it gave it to us. The funny uh, thing is, I, I don't even remember fighting a celestial. So like, <laughs> this whole thing is like, sure glad I have notes. <laughs> Um, Robin's the only one that pays attention in class (laughs) (laughs) okay I cheat off for notes Robin takes notes and you know uh, I know you did not get a name I don't recall anyone uh, specifically looking or asking and I have no notes of any skills that were ascertained okay so I will um pass that information along that we uh, actually didn't get anything else that would be considered particularly useful in that regard and that I do believe the angel did disappear after we defeated it because we definitely were not in one of the heavens when it went down so it's still out there somewhere because we're wizards we know shit exactly Uh, yes it was you know you were able to even if you were to think back uh, the, no check involved you know the, the the lot of you are intelligent uh, and someone's gonna pass a roll and know for sure that it either went up or it went down it was not a corporeal creature that was slain it wasn't me that passed <laughs> <laughs> what what was the name of the conjurer again uh the conjurer um zam okay uh, yeah, X A A M. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll look to him and say, uh, I don't know if it would be inside your capabilities, but uh, if we get your magic up again, would you be able to summon a celestial, and we could perhaps question them about what might be going on in the up I there could, lands? I could certainly call forth a uh, a celestial of one nature or another i am inclined to think the conjuration should be the next anyway because we did end up on a detour on the way here and that's the kind of magic that would have caused us to end up there at the mention of detour aptok kind of shudders a little bit and gets a little more withdrawn now i will tell you this is still zam speaking the the summoning sigil is not uh, easily uh, attainable. It is, it is going to be a rough journey. I strongly suspect that's going to be true of anything else we choose as well. Nothing has been the, easy uh, so far. Well, it is. And, and, and they, they extract the information as to, you know, what you did, you know, within the last two. Um, but, you know, Zam tells you that to, to get to this one, you must uh, traverse into the chaos wastes where chaos storms run, run rampant. And oh, good. within, within the, the center of one of these ever-present storms is, is, is essentially raw magic, raw chaos. It's unstable and an unclosable portal lies there written in its its very essence is this sigil. I see. That the the blasted wastes of the of the chaos lands are destroyed solely because of this particular sigil. So you will not be encountering normal creatures should you go there, but things that have been warped and twisted by ever-present magic, as well as the raw magic that has destroyed the land and warped some of these creatures. With all due respect, we just came from the beard domain. 
where we encountered beard trees and a beard dragon. Normal is not on our skill set. And the longer that we take to fix this one in particular, the more likely it's going to be that we end up somewhere we didn't intend to. Ooh. This could happen anyway. We could end up there anyway if we don't. I'm not in any way, shape, or form trying to dissuade you, but give you the information that no matter how prepared you think you are, there is no guarantee that you will be prepared for approaching summoning situation. Oh, no, we know we're not prepared. Out of game, I feel like this is the right crew to go to the chaos waste. <laughs> right? <laughs> Simper lateralis. <laughs> is that ever left? Yes. <laughs> uh, I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> So it uh it sounds that you are sounds like you are looking to uh, put forth a plan uh, to head into the chaos wastes. That sounds like an idea for me, to me, with me. <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> By me. <laughs> the, there are some things I'd like to research before we go, of course. Wait, likewise. Does it seem like the meeting's over? Um, the you know, if you don't have any, you know, further questions, or you know, they don't have any further questions for for you, then you know, things are able to to kind of disperse. Um, I, I've talked. Make I talk. I, I talk. My goodness, <laughs> eye contact with each of the masters and seeing nothing coming, just turn on his heel and walk to his quarters. Sure. Someone ought to see if something is up with him. Uh, spells, research, things to keep us alive. Uh, that's where I'm going. Ordo. I look to Ordo. You both have beards. <laughs> I'm just going to leave. <laughs> Go to the library. Yeah, I will. I will see to Avtok. Uh, when, when you get to my quarters, you see on the door a sign that says, please do not disturb. We'll be out momentarily. Oh, that's disconcerting. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Ordo would honor a do not disturb. So what does Ordo do seeing the sign? Does he... Uh, does he head to the library? Does he head to his own own chambers? Um, no, I think I will find a nearby seat where I can have a view of Avtok's door, and I will pull out my mirror and just start tending to my sections of it. Occasionally reaching in and pulling things out, and uh, I just imagine this like like little uh, console table next to me, and if anybody's watching, there's probably like a haversack's worth of stuff that I just pull out of my beard and just kind of do an inventory sure. and checking on. Uh, so do you do, you do a full inventory stuff. of your pack? Um, yeah, I think just mostly looking to check on components, uh, check on. Uh, the uh, the uh, air tonics and and right. things that I have, yeah. R roll a roll a d six for me. Sure. <laughs> That's a six. That is a six. Uh, so as you begin taking things out, uh, you you see that. You know, your bag rustles a little bit. And as you remove something here, or remove something there, something comes flying out of your pack. Um, yeah, uh, Ordo was going to let out a very undignified uh, <laughs> scream. 
Uh, <laughs> so apparently your neighbors come running with your uh, time spent in the in the beard dimension. Uh, Mustachio, a bat like creature made of hair is now flying like around your head. Yeah, I think there's just this. At first, I scream. Um, at first, I was petrified. Uh, <laughs> as I start. Uh, I, I imagine, though, it kind of quickly becomes apparent what this is. And the fear turns to uh, Ordo standing on a chair trying to just come, come, come down from there. Are you trying to catch it or are you trying to uh, shoo it away? Um, it's a flying mustache. So yes. I'm thinking I don't want it to just be shooed loose within this headquarters. So yeah, I'm trying to catch it. All right. Uh, go ahead and make an animal handling check. Using I'm gonna hands. I'm gonna use my uh, sixteen portent because I want that thing caught. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, do I have to see them? Is that a thing? I don't know. I I'm rolled an either. eighteen. Okay. And my animal handling that would make that a uh, dirty twenty. All right. Um, so it's but... less trying to catch it than it's trying to corral it and sort of sure. coax it. Yeah. It's a creature I can see, so I couldn't have done it anyway. Uh, so uh, yes, you, you're able you were able to catch it and convince it to either, you know, land on your outstretched hand or finger as you so desire. Oh, well. What are you doing here, little fellow? Oh, hold on. And with all of my inventory laid out, um, I just grab a uh, a fine bone beard comb. Ah, yes, a little ruffled there. And I just start styling the mustache hairs. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem to be very vocal. But if you've ever seen an animal that kind of like sh shivers in uh, when it when it's being pet or you know has a pleasant feeling, you kind of you kind of get that sensation. And it enjoys what you are doing. I will. I will just spend my time uh, combing this mustache and uh, trying to earn its trust. All right, uh, Chesseline, uh, as you are going to leave the uh, the council chambers, you know, Raylith tries to catch your eye. He doesn't say anything. Oh, it's not hard. She was looking that way anyway. She'll uh, hang back. So was there anything else that transpired within the, uh, the confines of the graveyard? Oh, yes. I'm going to tell him about the ghosts. Mm. And they are. It is within... Yes. I promise I'm not going to come back possessed every time we go out to do this. I don't think you can possess something twice, but well, this one is not as much of a problem as the last one. You don't... You do not seem possessed. You seem... You seem yourself. Yes. Is this a more complimentary situation, or do you feel any hostile intent? No, she is working with me. But yet, without conversation, you have some of their memories? Yes. I know many of the things that she knows. I can feel her power coursing through me. It's more of a symbiosis. This uh, is rather unheard of. And he, you know, and you're able to cut him off or listen, but like he goes into almost like a dissertation of the different types of spectral undead. And it's not 
you know, one of these maniacal, loving, caressing scenarios, more of like a bullet point list of you've got this hours, you've got this with this kind of thing. Um, but I've never, never seen spirits that cohabitate and leave only the better then it would certainly be worth further study. I would think that there should be a record of something like this, because if it can happen once, it can happen again. Would you be able to give me the precise location where this transpired? I would say there is the... um the mausoleum where you drop down into the underground. And this was about 80, maybe 100 feet down the first tunnel, a little to the left. There are many mausoleums down there. So if you're going to attempt to guide him to it, I would just say uh, either history or straight up intelligence check and see how close you can get him. Uh, I have history because of the ghosts. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta open my dice window because I forgot to do that before we started. Here we go. Uh, dirty 20. There you go. All right, that's that's more than enough uh, to get him to the general area, if not exactly where he needs to go. Perhaps I'm, I too might uh, go back and see what is what is going on there and perhaps get a little inspiration myself. It was certainly something. Well, I am. One does not typically venture down paths of arcane that I have without dabbling now. I can tell you that I was definitely inspired. And I can assume that you took some power for yourself? I did. How do you feel? Stronger. Definitely deadlier. I'm like just grinning at the pun. Well, should you have any questions? Should you need any lessons while you are here? I will definitely seek you out. And with that, he he nods and he doesn't smile much, but you can definitely see bearish traces of a smirk. And, uh, you know, he heads off in the direction you believe is to, you know, his quarters, or at least, you know, his area. You guys have been here long enough to know that you know, the, the council room is basically an octagonal room with the, the one side being, you know, the, the raised dais with the eight seats and then all of the, you know, the sitting area for however many people would need. You know, at least several dozen could fit in, fit in there uh, with, with chairs. Most of the chairs have been removed and more comfortable chairs have been brought in for, you know, a smaller number. Uh, but each, each of the masters has their own chambers, their own, you know, private uh, lab or, you know, area for experimental. And then each of them have several attendants. And then there's the grounds and other rooms, the library, general uh, magical chambers for alchemy and experimental magics and what have you. It's quite a complex. As the evening passes, anyone wish to do anything? Or we venture for the next day. Uh, I've talked well with Joshua, doesn't have anything to do. Joshua's just researching spells that he thinks are useful. Sure. Um, All right. So, so in his quarters, Aptox goes to uh, whatever would happen to be like the bathroom type area and stands looking in the mirror just breathing heavily, gets out a straight razor, 
and begins meticulously shaving his new beard that he's been working on. Cuts himself a few times because he's never shaved before. So are you shaping or shaving it off? Oh, it's it's gone. Uh, I continually cut myself, bleeding everywhere. I look like I lost a fight with a lawnmower. Uh, after about half hour, 45 minutes, I got most, if not all of it. Uh, and then I sigh again, summon my book and my quill, flip to... Wait, roll a d20 for me. Uh-oh. Hey, that's actually good. 17. Go ahead. Uh... <laughs> Why was that? <laughs> oh, if you roll, if you rolled a ten or under, there was going to be a you know another mustachio. And it oh, be- if I'm, oh yeah. no, I'm done. I shaved that sucker too. <laughs> uh, and turns to the page of the. Uh, oh crap! I totally just forgot the beardomancy spell I learned from Ordo. Sure. And I take my quill. I look at the feather. I look at the spell, and I just wave the feather over the spell and the spell disappears from my book sure it looks like it's painful you know he's never deleted a spell before and it seems like it hurts to do it but so he did not have a good time in the beard dimension and wants nothing to do with it uh, uh, so what what precisely is the problem you know uh just just sharing a little bit of the mentality even though you know you're the one in the room i he decided that after getting attacked by hair, hair is disgusting. He doesn't want anything to do with it. It's dirty and greasy and gross. <laughs> and that's his mentality. He just, <laughs> uh, The next thing he does is from the front of his spell book, about silver dollar sized in kind of like a, almost like a jewelry setting there's this coin type stone that's kind of ridged and he carefully pulls it out and then holds it in his hand talks to it it's like we really don't want to go anywhere like that it's just talking to this stone like it's sentient and eventually after a few minutes it's like we'll get you to where you need to go and he puts it back in the setting taps it gets rid of his book Takes a deep breath, walks outside of his quarters, sees Ordo, and goes and apologizes to him for wasting his time by learning this spell, explains to him what went on in his mind, and asking him for shaving advice in case he needs it in the future. So let's, let's rewind to, before you begin speaking, what is Ordo's reaction to <laughs> Seeing that the beard you cultivated for Avtok is gone, and two, seeing how horribly nicked up and horn is the face that used to have a beard. Probably as soon as Avtok, as you emerge, Ordo. Oh, Avtok. I was wanting to. Oh, my goodness. What happened? I do I do hope it wasn't a reaction from the from the beard oils I gave you. No. I uh Do you need I, after, me to conjure you up another beard? Oh no, no, please. No th- no thank you. Uh it all, all is well. I just uh after spending the time in the realm where you get your magic, I discovered that I am not a fan. No offense, no offense. It, it is perfectly wonderful for you, and I fully support everything you want to do with it. And your beard is glorious. I just don't think it's for me. It's me, not you. <laughs> well, I assure you, I take absolutely no offense, and if I'm being honest, I took immense pride in being able to teach you this. Of course, prepare your first beard. However, I was also a bit jealous. Now oh, mine shall be the only glorious beard amongst us. However, yes. 
<laughs> if you would like a mustache, and I kind of go like this, where mustachio now perches on my upper lip, and I just go, and you see that I'm holding a mustache in my hand. Oh, it might look good on you, and I'm just kind of holding it in front of you. It it flaps the you know the little curled edges of its mustache a little uh, bit. Can I make some kind of a roll to see if I faint? <laughs> uh sure um make, make a constitution saving throw oh man i'm good at constitution this like roll with his advantage oh, but not rolling dice <laughs> <laughs> so that's a with a saving throw where are those at there it is a plus three seven it's the All equivalent right. of an elephant and a mouse basically that, that was my plan that... uh <laughs> so it's not a full-on faint but I'll, uh, I swoon. Like, coll <laughs> collapse and fall fall back. Um, you're not unconscious, but you certainly react poorly, fall fall back, and you know land completely on your arse. Oh dear! I, I'm going oh to add, add a flaw that I'm afraid of hair. I <laughs> sure. I immediately replace. Uh, I can uh, actually, it. I imagine uh, Mustachio just sort of flitting up and. As you appear to be swooning, I immediately break out some smelling salts and place them in front of your trunk. Do I wake up? Uh, yeah, yeah. You so see, you weren't completely unconscious. Okay. It was more like you reacted poorly. You know, the the old cartoon where the literally the elephant sees the mouse and goes ah. <laughs> Perfect. You fall, you fall on your butt. It's probably worse for you that you're awake when I put smelling salts on your nose. I don't know if <laughs> yeah, you've ever smelled it's smelling cool. salts. <laughs> Does it do something to damage me since I have perception advantage with smelling? Uh, I was going to actually ask that. So uh, it is it is, <laughs> it is, strong and incredibly unpleasant. So you, you, you have had two very nasty experiences, if not three, if you want to, you know, count the fall on your rump. You're not I'm used to that. I'm clumsy. I got an eight dex. <laughs> sure. Uh, but, you know, at least the, the mustachio is out of your face. And the question is, is Ordo using his beard to deliver the smelling salts? Or is he actually using his hand? Um, I would have retrieved it from my beard. Uh... Well, actually, no, because all my stuff was on the table, so I would have had to reach over and and grab it. So, yeah, I probably would have used my hands. Okay. Yeah, after uh, having this conversation with Ordo, Aptox seems like a lot lighter in heart and more... It, it seemed like he was really dreading apologizing to and the conversation with Ordo more for what he would think of it than anything. So he's glad that he took well, it well. And once once you're back up and and I'm sort of uh, grabbing all my stuff and just kind of tucking it back into my beard, I, w I would absolutely assure you, no hard feelings whatsoever, my friend. But hey, do you I, ever I change your mind? You, you'll be the first to know. So is there anything else that anyone wishes to do this evening? Wish Speranza was here to heal my face. <laughs> oh, you guys do know that you have the pack that can produce healing potions. Um, and it, it does produce them per day. So you could go and splash some healing potion on, on your face. Like aftershave? <laughs> <laughs> or you could drink it like a normal person. Where's the fun of that? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. It's you being normal. That's not. <laughs> so, all right. Everybody go ahead and give me a D20 roll as you bed down. I got an eight. Thirteen. Oh, bother. Four. I actually rolled best. 
I got an 18. <laughs> Let's oh, subject it. We don't man. know what we're rolling for. <laughs> I, I don't know, but that's the highest I've ever rolled on this die. <laughs> Turns out high is bad. My previous that's... was the 17 earlier today. <laughs> wow, you you rolled twice well on, on one die. Yeah, we're screwed. You. Okay, what time is the session in? <laughs> <laughs> as you, as, as the lot of you fall asleep, Ordo, how much do you remember your dreams? Just in general? In general. Um... I think Yeah, I think Ordo is a dreamer. Uh and so um yeah, definitely he's somebody that remembers dreams, probably has several dream set pieces, so he kind of goes to different dream places and categorizes them and often daydreams about the dreams that he had. Yeah, he knows his dream. So, how does your dream this evening start? Um, I think because we were most recently in the beard dimension, uh, Ordo has a uh, burst of uh, beard spiration for his dreams. And uh, it's a dream that he has often, where he is being honored by... Um, the he's being honored as the finest, not only having the finest beard in all the land, but being the finest beard barber in all the land. Uh, and he is known for traveling from kingdom to kingdom, enhancing the beards of lords and ladies and gentlefolk, uh, all across the land. Um, Basically, wherever he goes, um, he is praised for being the greatest artisan of all. So, you you get this idea of this praise. And as you push, and you go from, you don't remember the journey you just remember going, oh, I'm in this castle, and now I'm in that castle, as dreams are pretty much wont to do. But then the concept of, well, why do I stop at just lords and ladies? What if everyone who wants a beard could have one, and one tailored by me? And almost in like rapid motion, you get the sense as you go from house to house to house, and you watch without sleep, without rest, barely a morsel, barely a drink, as you begin withering away, trying to meet this goal of satisfying everyone. The luster that you once had in your own hair and beard lost. You're trying to give everyone else that thing that you used to have. Pushes and pushes. And you're not sure how. But subtle changes begin to happen as you begin to wither. The landscape changes. You go from vast forests or vast forested cities to snowy climates to mountaintops. So now you're in a golden city. Now everyone that you're working on has white or golden wings. The beards that you're crafting begin to resemble your own withered, misshapen, poorly treated, 
unoiled beards, as opposed to being lavished with praise. Everyone you go to seems to be heaping naught but insults and anger directed at you. And you rush to the next one, hoping to correct as you leave strands of your own deteriorating beard behind. Please make a wisdom saving throw with disadvantage. Disadvantage. Do. With the, oh jeez, okay. <laughs> uh, I have a plus four to my wisdom saving throw, giving me a total of six. Ah, oh, was close. <laughs> <laughs> so you're unable to pull yourself out of this dream, and as you turn your client look in the mirror you look and you knew that the the beard was of your your own beard was faltering as you look there's barely any length to it whatsoever the last couple of days you haven't been able to get it to lift a single strand despite all of your magical coaxing Several more clients, several more angers as you seem to climb deeper into this dream and further up this almost golden mountain with clouds around you. You don't remember faces. You only remember the anger. But most of all, you remember the look of your own bedraggled, useless beard as you awake with a level of exhaustion. I shaved my beard off. <laughs> you did not. <laughs> you, yeah, I imagine the first thing you do is reach and, you know, your beard is there. It seems to have been unhindered. But despite the fact that it is morning, you did not get any rest and you can feel the weight of whatever transpired in your dream and you remember it clearly. Yeah. I think because of that, I think the two things that, that would happen is that Ordo would spend probably twice as long tending to his beard but because of the exhaustion it just doesn't have the same luster that the equivalent the beard equivalent of bags under the eyes you know it's just kind of hanging limply and doesn't have the same fullness not, not as full and it Looks looks a little pushed up on one side, like he slept heavily on that side and just couldn't get it uh, to straighten out. All right. So, who is the next to awaken? All right, Joshua. You uh, slept. You slept soundly. Had no uh, no issues. We're good. Joshua is very superstitious about dreams. So, all right. Thank, thank you for that uh, ammunition. Uh, I will wake up and probably be the first one to like get out to breakfast and everything, since I imagine that that Ordo is spending that time fussing with his beard and still in his room. Well, I mean, to be fair, he does on a normal day. Mm hmm. But it takes even longer this time. But when he and does finally come down, I will will offer him coffee. 
But yeah. The rest of you, you know, go through the same as Joshua. No, no issues beyond your own. Uh, so I like to imagine that breakfast is like all of us go to the library, get like the small things that we can eat while we're studying and like get together and do like study circle while we're sure. here. Um, so Chess 100% is going to bring down a nice warm pot of coffee and like it, she's halfway studying, but also halfway just like, like registry of middle school crushes style doodling skulls in her notes. <laughs> um, uh, so anything that would fall into the sticky, messy, breakfasty nonsense, uh, you know, someone does say uh, you can finish that before you head into the library. Uh, drinks, they, you know, they're, they're good as long as they're in you know, library approved, non-spillable devices. Like, for cups. this reason, I imagine that we're all probably pretty uh, familiar with just biscuits with nothing on them. <laughs> Uh, they actually have, you know, here uh, almost like triangular glasses. So like they, like it, it takes work to spill them. I mean, I've not They're like that, you know, I've talked narrow mouth try, thicker at the bottom, <laughs> but you would have to try. Absolutely. Yeah. They're, you know, like they, they've got like the typical drinking top, but it, it splays out so that if you just kind of bump it, it'll slide. Not knock it down. If it's dexterity related, I got to knock. <laughs> I'm saying you could do it if you try, but you know, just the casual. Yeah, they saw you coming, man. So, what is the what is the study session? What are you looking to 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 look up and to do? I mean, angels for one thing. Like, if we're gonna be in some trouble with celestials, we need to know what we're up against. Sure. I think I'm well, gonna to prepare some conjuration spells. <laughs> for the for this encounter, this this place we're going to, I've researched some spells that might help us. Things that you know, protection from elements, or perhaps some magic circles to keep the, the celestials in. Just a few things that might come in handy. Um, and I'm gonna pull out. Uh, just I've copied four spells for each of them, mm -hmm. and it's. Uh, Magic circle, not detection, remove curse, and um, protection from elements. Okay. Uh, and the, the standard rules apply, you know, and it will be unless something drastically changes with headquarters. Um, you know, all of the, the parchment and ink you guys need, there's no gold cost associated with adding new spells to your spell book. There's something that is of an interest. It, it is there unless it's, you know, crazy. So is there like an alternate to holy water? Like there's holy water. Is there like a dark version of that? Sewage water? Um, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Let's see what information you can find out uh, within the uh, within the library. We call I'm it devil spit. If 16. I can Okay. <laughs> what was that, Frag? I was going to say, if I can see her looking into this, I could give her a 16 on the die. That would be far better than what I rolled. I get a plus five to this check. But I don't know if you want to use it for this. This is like kind of piddly, and I didn't roll terribly. I never use my portents. <laughs> okay, if you want I, to, I I'm not going to say no. To. <laughs> so as I'll long as Ted will allow it. Uh, yes, you could see her, and yes, you can go ahead and add the, uh, you know, add, add your portent to it. So oh. I, I walk up to her uh, as she's grabbing a book to look in this. I was like, I had an inkling that you would be in this section. It's this one you want to look in, and I walk off. Okay, and then I take the book that Avtok pointed at for 21. All right. Uh, so as you as you pull out the book, it was actually like a incredibly faded bookmark, almost to the point like once you open to that page, the bookmark kind of like falls to dust, to the ground. Doesn't seem to be named, uh, 
but there is a section for creating a anti-holy water. I'm going to copy all this down. Sure. Um, so it is, it is a process. It, it is, it is there. It's almost, it, it requires several reagents and the spell bestow curse to be able to create it. Okay. Like the sound of Robin typing as they look spell up. I just need to make sure that it is on the proper list for me to it go is. and get it. <laughs> Good. Good. Yes, it is indeed on the wizard spell list. Okay, cool. Like very next thing I do is going to be go find a book with that in it. You can talk to me. <laughs> Ab talk. Do you really? Yes, please. Uh, when you take into account how fast the scribe wizard can scribe spells, as we level up, I literally just down the list. Yeah, that makes sense. That <laughs> entirely tracks. So, um, yeah, Chess is going to like spend a little bit of time with Av talk, um, learning bestow curse for the sake of making some of this nonsense over here. Uh, so, a couple of the things would, uh, you know, wouldn't be a problem, but the one or two things that you'd have to, like, ask for, they're not, like, readily available. Cool. But you get the idea that this, this particular book has not been moved in a while. So, while it's not like, oh, my God, I found something, you know, crazy not a whole lot of people you have the idea that not a whole lot of people are aware of such a thing well i have to imagine that it's not something they have a lot of cause to use here either because i mean like when are you going to find angels in the library sure but you have the idea that what in here isn't um like it could have effects on more than just celestial yeah. Yes. It's almost more like a um, like a liquid fiendish corruption more than just a hey, this this hurts things that are celestial. But it's a cool thing to anti holy water. I'm just gonna like it get out a little cauldron. Like you know how like in Harry Potter they have like the cauldrons on the desk and potions mm -hmm. yeah, class yeah. Mm -hmm. and like yeah, just that setup. Sure. This is what I'm gonna be doing all morning. <laughs> With extreme glee. In extreme glee. All right. Um, so Avtok, are you assisting Chesseline? Are you off from the your own project? What uh, are we doing? If she will uh, let me, I will be like going through my book and just pushing spells I think she would be interested in <laughs> towards oh, her. Please. So are you attempting to create this recipe or are you trying to make something of your own? Oh, I'm definitely trying to make a variant that is specifically geared towards Celestials. So... You know, like just uh, maybe if there's one particular ingredient listed, I might like try to find something a little bit spicier or a little bit more attuned with what I need it to do. All right. What? Oh, uh, hell no, nah, potion. What tool proficiencies does Chesseline have? Let me <laughs> see. I don't have that written where I usually write that kind of thing. Um, Avtok, what ones do you have? Yeah. That's what I was just looking at. Uh, tools, none. <laughs> Where is that usually on the sheet? Uh, it's on. under your armor, weapons, tools, languages on the bottom left on D&D Beyond. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, it's, I'm not on D&D Beyond. Uh, I have a normal character uh, sheet. A normal character sheet is usually in that still in that same spot. Yeah, I know. I didn't. I didn't write it down. <laughs> Let me. Uh, what what is your take? I don't. I don't actually think that I have any. Uh, I have the Outlander background, so no, I don't have okay, any. Yeah. I have a, I have a musical instrument because that's useful in this situation. <laughs> Indeed. Um, so you understand that you 
you can follow direct. You don't have a whole lot of uh, exposure or experience to alchemy, to herbalism, you know, any of the things that would really give you a grounding. Okay. What to do here. So I'm going to like write down some hypothesis for later uh, exploration, but I suppose I should follow the recipe first and make sure that I can get that right and then try a variant later since sure. I don't have any background in this. So what is Joshua doing in the library today? Joshua, what is he doing? doing he's already researched the spells i guess then he's probably spent the morning jotting them down in very nice handwriting with his calligraphy supplies since uh, that is the tool <laughs> training i have um i i think he'd be spending his day uh trying to gather as much information about the chaos kind of stuff as possible uh but he's feeling very calm about the idea of going into the chaos realm like this feels right or not the chaos realm, but like chaos wastes. Chaos wastes. Mm -hmm. This definitely feels right to him. Um, and uh, so I think mostly just yeah, looking into like the nature of chaos magic and like probably reading studies uh, specifically of sorcerers who have like the the chaos magic sure kind of trait. Uh, curious about how that manifests. Uh, I think that was more of a tangent. I think he was just kind of like, oh, I found this thing and this is interesting and then got stuck like reading and sort of sidetracked on this whole thing. Sure. But yeah, that's the main focus. Is the All right, space. so go ahead and, and give me an investigation roll. Okay. Investigation is a eight. Nope, dirty 20. All right. So you spent some time looking into sorcerers and a number of stories talk about as, as is absolutely what you would expect out of chaos, many sorcerers, despite you know the study being happening, they're not able to ascertain any particular uh, reason of why some people are able to draw upon that inherent chaotic magic. You know, it's not that they weren't able to, to look at any. You know, oh, they were in proximity of a chaos storm or this, that, the other thing. Um, they weren't able to find any anything about familial bloodlines. Chaos is chaos. And sometimes it is just that. There is one, one theorist who feels that given enough time, even chaos you know, can be calculated because chaos can be repeated if given enough time because with enough time, absolute random stops being random. But others have said that that is utterly ridiculous because given enough time, you can figure anything out. Um, uh, a monkey Shakespeare situation. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but you know that that it, it's ridiculous because there's no way to test that but time, and one person can't provide that. Uh, mm -hmm. It just thinks they're they're a load of crud. It and is a fascinating theory that, given enough time, all things will occasion will inevitably repeat. Um, but given information in regards to the chaos wastes. Uh, it is a place where, at a moment's notice, the weather can change. Very few things find it habitable because, you know, it, it could be a, a blizzard at this moment, a torrential downpour the next, and then a blazing hot sun a minute later. Mm -hmm. So most things who live there have been warped and changed in a way that the actual elements aren't really a problem. And to wizards who tend to throw, a lot, throw around a lot of elemental damage, that can be a serious problem. Mm. 
going through the 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 chaotic nature of chaos uh, mm-hmm. and, and the ever changing aspect of it, that would spark an idea in Joshua, and he would seek out his mentor and ask what the nature of chaos does to one's name. What do you mean? Oh. Assuming I come across living things in the chaos realm or chaos planes, am I going to have any control over their names or is it going to change as soon as I get a finger on it? Well, things that are inherently chaotic are not necessarily going to be sentient in a way that you would be able to manipulate them as we tend to do. So I'm not certain how much of our or your brand of magic is going to stand out in such a place. You must remember that the core of what we do is on that self-identify. When you confidently and proudly say, I am, insert the rest of your name here, that is an identifying marker. And that, the magic of that name, those fey folk who have enough sense to know what we do, and those few of us who have gone down this rare breed of magic, know what that inherent statement is and how to call upon that to use. But in a place where things are ever changing, I think you would have to be there a long time for it to change you enough that you would be something different. But anywhere another experience can change who you are for the better or for the worse. That is why when we collect the names, when we are are in the moment enough, we use them when we can. They're not just something that is stored away and in 20 years we're going to be able to use it. It's not what we do. Yes, some names will always be useful. Those are for the creatures that are long lived, aren't like the typical pesky mortals who are a dime a dozen. If one is changed by the chaos, could you in theory use their name to help guide them back to who they were or are they forever lost to it? That is an interesting theory. I am I will say I've never been to the chaos ways. I've read a little bit about it. There's very little of appeal to me and given its ever-changing nature I can only assume that those that are there are in that same boat but if you were to know the name prior to what they were, it is possible they could be reshaped back to who they were. It's a sound theory. Hmm. Well, thank you. I think that I have enough information to move forward with my goals. Is that all? Yes. Thank you for your time. Then I'll like kind of step out of the room, trying to kind of uh, bow to this man who's much shorter than me. <laughs> yeah, and he goes back, and you know, he he was writing something in a book. Right. Go ahead. Uh, when I go back to the library, I'm gonna you know sit down as everyone is doing what they're doing, and kind of just have a moment of of like contemplation where I'm just sort of zoning in my own thoughts, not really taking in what's going on around me. 
and then I'm going to interrupt whatever the rest of the party is doing and say, so I know you all know the nature of my magic. I haven't been particularly good at hiding it. Um, <laughs> we're, we're going to a place where uh, there is a potential risk to, to us just from the realm, or at least I, I assume there will be. And if I have all of your names, true names, given to me willingly, I could potentially use that to help should any of us undergo afflictions uh, like, oh my gosh, I forgot V's character's name. Speranza. <laughs> Speranza, yeah. Speranza. Like Speranza, like what happened to Speranza coming back from the teleportation? If I have this information, perhaps I can be of more help. Should anything bad happen to us in the chaos wastes? Chaos, that was right, yeah. Yeah, chaos wastes. I know that is a lot of me to ask, trust-wise. And I understand if that's something you're not willing to do. But for the sake of your own safeties, I would feel comfortable if I knew I had a way to help if anything bad happened to you. Anybody can roll inside if you want. Me personally, I'm going to have to talk to Ted out of game to find out how this would work. <laughs> It would be tricky. Right? <laughs> <laughs> how, how you would have a name? Or... Oh, there are, there are things you do not know about Avtok. <laughs> oh, that's... Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> There's subplots, people. <laughs> have you not Everybody has tried... subplots. <laughs> had you not tried unwillingly to take it from me previously, I might entertain this notion. Well, you bring up a valid point. I have not apologized for that. That was not all right of me. See, the no, thing is, if I give it to you now, then I won't be able to get it back later. This is not a decision that I can undo. This is a valid point. And that is why I say I know it's not an easy choice to make, and I don't blame you for... Here's a question. Definitely. You have to hear it from a person's own lips. Does reading it from their own hand count? That's a good question, Ted. Does reading it from their own hand count? Uh, I would say that there are nuances to a signature, but typically, and this is this is my interpretation, Onomancy gets more power out of the, the freely given spoken name. You might be able to do something with a signature, but you know, I feel a signature is far easier to change, whereas I am Narcus Ted is vastly different. But if I write it down specifically with the intent for Joshua to use it later if he needs to, then that would be freely given with that intent in mind. I think that could work. So I'm going to write my name down. I'm going to fold it up. I'm going to seal it in wax and I'm going to give it to Ordo. All right. If he needs it, you can get that out and give it to him. If we end up in that situation, then by all means, sure. But if not... I will immediately take it and seal it in a uh, beard canister and secret away within confines of my beard. I was almost expecting a I will take it and open it up and read it out loud. <laughs> uh, so what is what is Ordo's thoughts here? You've been rather quiet. We still have to figure out what Ordo's been doing with his well, day. As far as what Ordo's been doing with his day up until the point where Joshua was talking to us, 
Ordo appeared to be deep in study. A book propped up, and you can see his head as he's sort of moving it back and forth, reading intently. But at some point, the book just sort of goes, it falls flat on the table, and you realize that it's not Ordo's been reading. Ordo's head's been going. As he's trying to stay awake, he's just so exhausted. Um, I pass him coffee. Um, the coffee helps, uh, and Ordo does enjoy a fine coffee. Um, but yeah, once, once Joshua's talking, first would take, uh, the, as I said, secret away, the safely, keep a secret, keep it safe, uh, Chess's name. Um... I, I'm going to choose trust you, Joshua. I have seen things recently with Speranza, my own exhaustive dreaming that make me worry for my own safety. So I will speak to my true name. Is Ordo Silverborn? I didn't. Oh, I was born with this glorious beard. I adopted the name when I became a barber. But I was born to a wealthy family and I could afford to go to cosmetology and medical school it couldn't keep a straight face when i said that <laughs> <laughs> cosmetology and medical school um like they're the same thing but uh yes my name is ordo silverball So as far as Joshua you know, is aware, you know, you've got a theory, and you know, it's completely untested. You're hoping that you know, the information that you have extracted has, has some potential, but with chaos, nothing is certain beyond chaos. Mm -hmm. Mordo's just seen what happened to Speranza and is like kind of worried. So, you know. So later later on that day, and I apologize that you do not have Speranza's master's name written down. Isn't it her brother or something like that? No. Uh, my brother is oh, my that's what it was. teacher. Yes, that's um, right. Hers is a tabaxi. That's right. Uh, I knew someone was a brother. I pay some attention. Uh... No, her master comes and lets you all know, at least for the time being. You know, Speranza is resting. She is not not recovered, and until some time, we, we do not know whether she will be able to return within the uh, the confines of this mission. Her life is not at risk, but she is not in in condition to travel, and let alone the uh, going to a place like the Cass Wastes. Well, this isn't something that can wait, unfortunately. Uh, that, is, that is fine. We can consult the other masters and find if you feel that there is assistance, further assistance needed placement might be had i i personally can see what can be done before we get out did ted cut out for everybody else yes yeah i, I thought i touched something wrong <laughs> so did i oh, crap what did i do oh, as the I, 
<laughs> as the stream producer, I'm very listening to everybody's audio. And that, <laughs> I needed to make Your sure whole audio like, just dropped and got really quiet because I could still uh, hear it, but it was. Yeah, fake. I just heard like. It, oh. I was, I'm, 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 it, it like lowered on my end and I thought I hit my volume button. I'm like, it's nowhere near where I was touching. <laughs> Me too, I was fiddling with my volume knob. Everything looks fine here. No, you're fine. Me? You're fine now. It just um, yeah, it just went weird for a minute. No, so uh the, the master says that you know they're gonna stay and look after their charge. Um, but if you feel that you need further assistance before you head into the wastes, they can uh, look and see what might be done. Yeah, you know, and then it was going to ask, like, how long were you thinking about uh, staying before you head off into the wastes? How much time do you do you have, or how much time do you want to spend researching? You guys have, you know, as much time as you really want. I mean, they're the masters are like, hey, look, this is this is what we're trying to do. It's completely up to up to you as far as. Uh, you know, how this mission goes because they can't go do it themselves, or at least they're not willing. Well, a couple of days to copy spells down is probably a good idea. At some point during those couple of days, I will corner Joshua and whisper in his ear my name. And then say, if you tell anyone or look into it too closely, we will have issues. I'm just going to say, when you whisper your name, Joshua just like has this face of like complete shock and terror. And he doesn't what? even know why. What is the, going on over there? The, uh, the, did he pass it to you privately? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It does not come out properly in common. That's probably why Joshua would look terrified. <laughs> I'm just thinking of an episode of Rick and Marty where, like, you hear there's this cat that does all these terrible things, and then when he when he tells Rick what he did, Rick is just like terrified, but you never hear the sorts of things the cat ever did. I just wanted that to happen with Joshua in this name. No, I'm gonna have to have the Pepe Sylvia board. Uh, Joshua, what is your passive perception? Um, I was writing notes. I didn't, couldn't tell. Give me a second. Come on, load D&D Beyond. Uh, 12. Okay. No, it's nine. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. That's inside. Oh, That's That's <laughs> even better. Excellent. Not a very perceptive person. And that's amusing. Give him. <laughs> <laughs> well his his wisdom is is my dump stat because right. he he was foolish enough to get involved in the type of magic he's doing sure all right so uh, over the next several days each of you have a very similar dream as to what ordo experienced if you're not one who tends to remember your dream, you wake up exhausted, unable to, you know, truly function. We've all, I believe we've probably all had, had those kind of, you know, nights um, at least once in our life. Um, it's up to you as to whether you want to get into it. Ordo after the first night, it gets better. You are able to, to get, get some sleep, spend some time actually resting and recovering. But you all you all begin having these, these moments where you're you're seeing some commonalities of this whatever it is that you start your dream at. It's, it's warping and changing and being brought into this mountain city in the clouds and the angry angels. 
I'm starting to get the feeling like we're going to have to go there. Not immediately, probably not anytime soon, but once we finish this, we're going to have to stop them from starting it all over again. Is that stupid? No, no, I think it makes sense. The... <sighs> If if they're determined to do this thing, no matter who we confront, they're going to keep doing it. And we still need to know why. Well, if we can do the plan of the fixing conjuration magic and then... Um, conjure a celestial perhaps we could learn a thing or two more i doubt it'll be a celestial that we need but at the very least we could figure out if something is going on strangely within their order of things i think that seems like a sane plan a sound idea as it were i think summoning a angel to the wizard's court when they're actively trying to suppress magic is probably the dumbest thing we could do. Well, unless unless we fix conjuration and abjuration first and then we can make it leave if we have to. Oh, well that's actually kind of, that's a good idea. Thank you. I have a couple of those occasionally. That must be nice. I find it ironic. Our plan is to go to the realm of chaos in order to seek order. Isn't it just? Isn't order organized chaos? That's just mathematics. Oh. So, over these days, they, uh, Chesseline and Avtok attempt to create this anti-holy water. Yes. All right. Yes, with gleeful abandon. I will add my devil spit because I know that's what you need. So, oh, go ahead. what what preparations is entirely your project? Are you getting anyone else on board? Oh, yeah, like, we're going to figure out who knows the most about, like, alchemy and that kind of thing to, like, come supervise the attempt. Going to, like, get the best of ingredients that we can get our hands on. Like, I uh, spend the whole day prior to the attempt of making this thing, like, with the cauldron on the desk, you know, like, just making sure I'm familiar with everything that goes into it, like. All right, so you have your choice. You can go... Uh, to the half orc Ev Oneth Bloodsword or the Gnomish Transmuter Iruze Mosswood. So I think that I might um, be playing favorites here because I, out of character, my favorite school of magic is transmutation. But I think that uh, a chess would pick the gnome if Avtok is in agreement with that. Also, I don't really trust Oneth around glassware. He he is a larger than light wizard. So you, you get the impression that Avtok, when they were introducing everyone, wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. So he's just kind of like, meh, whatever. Is uh, that because however, Frag wasn't paying attention? You don't know. <laughs> but to be Are fair, sure? I had to go back and rewatch the first episode to pull everybody's names out of it. So you you could have just asked. I, I, I've watched it three down. times. I still don't remember any of it, <laughs> including my own people. <laughs> uh, I prepared as a spell borrowed knowledge so that if I have to roll dice, I can at least have proficiency in whatever skill you make me roll for. <laughs> uh, all right, so you're going to uh, uh, Eruxi? Yes. Uh, so she is a, the Gnomish transmuter. She definitely seems intrigued by this. And when you bring it to light, 
you know, there's that like that aha moment of like, I thought I read that somewhere kind of thing. And, you know, she, she brings in not just you know, her herself, but like she wheels this little cart in and the cauldron you have is standard and she seems to have like really nice stuff. You know, the, the, the beakers and vials that she has, has like uh, filed in lines so that they're pretty, you know, like you can expect those were precise measurements. And she begins to, to get to work and she listens to some of the, the things that you have as, oh, possibles. Uh, but without, you know, a whole lot of fanfare over the, the course of this day, you're able to make a handful of these vials. Of, don't know what it's called yet. It, is that like a Speranza handful or an Avtok handful? Because that could be a very different amount. Let's do this. <laughs> You've got seven. Nice. Are you writing that down, Robin? Yes, I am. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I literally <laughs> just wrote down devil water and we can change the name later. Yeah, we'll, if, we'll, if, we'll come up with something. If it's the opposite of holy water, I figured unholy land. <laughs> it's the... You're able to... It's the drought of the damned. Nice. But spelled drought and not drought or drop, however you say it. Yeah, like the, the one that's <laughs> the, the one that's liquid. Uh, so with some plans being made, some gambling in the future is to find out whether or not we're gonna add somebody else back into this party uh, for for next time. I think uh, we'll kind of gloss over this next day to see exactly what transpires as you make your preparations to head into the chaos wastes to take out the summoning sigil. What is going on with it? So that conjuration magic might be righted. So as always, uh, I'd like to thank these awesome people for playing. Thank all of you out there for watching. The Not only are the links to all these wonderful people and where you can be able to find them on the internet down in the description below, but so too you will find in there the link to our sponsor, Easy Roller Dice, and their website and that 20% off coupon code, as well as the link to our Kickstarter that's out there. We're funded. Just trying to see how many more people want to get a copy because it's going to be a lot of fun. Jake mentioned uh, the game that I attend uh, on Thursday nights. One of the magic items from that particular game is in there. One of the, the cool artifacts that uh, Jake gave us permission to, to put in. So a lot of fun. And it's full of magic items from a variety of sources of, you know, Nerdarchy products, as well as stuff from our games all over the place. I think uh, Robin might recognize a few from their games with the Scarlet Sisterhood. So a lot of fun, fun stuff. Well, you can. So I'd like to just reach out and say thanks for everything. And until next time, stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy.